Howdy everyone, War Sarcy here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Hexagravity with guest Kent Sullivan. Hey, what's up? And yes, we're using a camera to record this because as simple as this game is in visuals and pretty much everything, it looks like, honestly, I'm going to say right off the bat, it looks like it could be a mobile game. Some reason, you'll notice, it doesn't support video capture, which is something that I don't understand why most, if not all, games should have on a Switch, in all indie games, period, should have, because it's not like a lot of indie developers actually put a lot into pushing the Switch to its limits. It's like almost nothing does, period. So, anyways, let's get that out of the way. So I would imagine people, indie developers, would want their video to be recorded anyway, to get shown for some publicity. I, I, I would at least want that. I already tried basic cube one time, and that's pretty much the only thing I did, so it's just pretty much mostly a first impressions thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. There's of course other ones that you can lock, like the Neon Tesseract Super Ink Boy, yeah, Flapster, Flap which basically makes it almost like you're in a 3D Flappy Bird like thing from what I've seen on screenshots. But anyways, let's get going with this. And the cool thing is it, it doesn't start moving until you start climbing. I mean, uh, I'm uh, already a uni user. <laughs> that trail effect, I, I'm really familiar with that trail effect. Yeah, it, a lot of the games that I tend, tend to do reviewing, I've seen a lot of indie people, oh, well that was a crap start. I'll try that again. But a lot of uh, indie developers tend to turn to Unity, and this is one of them. I've seen some pretty good get Unity games on this channel. I mean, if you all go back and look at my Rico review that was made with Unity, and that game is one of the best games that I've reviewed on this channel. Uncle Rico. The game where you, like, slam into your was a drag house and beat the living crap out of it. Yeah, this... Um, they, they, I like the way they do the graphics in this. I mean, it's simple. I mean, obviously, but I, I like stylized games. This looks, this looks pretty stylized for what it is. I mean, simple, but stylized in an interesting way. But but yeah, that trail, I, I definitely recognize it because I use it in Unity. Like when you make bullets, you use that for like bullet trails. And Let's stuff. try the next level. Yeah, so far this this isn't a very demanding game. I honestly, I'm I haven't looked it up, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that would be on uh, mobile. And oh, this like is actually kind of an ins this is actually mixing things up a little, making it so that it's a bit darker, so... Very trolling -like. At least they're kind of... They're getting a little creative with this. I hope that the other levels continue to do this. Oh crap, I just backed myself into a corner now! Oh, one day you're about to get in. Or right now you're actually in Tron technically. You are in. <laughs> I'm in a Remember that in the past few days we've been hanging out. No, I mean, uh, I'd say this game is available for $2 if you're looking this up and uh, just to review. This is available for $2. So for $2, I'd say it's, this isn't too bad so far. I mean, it's not, I don't know if this is something that you could play for extended lengths of time, so maybe if you have friends over or if you're competitive type, you could, you could definitely try to beat your high score, but... There's basically five different level types, and this goes on for as long as you go on. Ah, crap. The world dies with you. See if I unlock the level three yet, or... Yeah, I got... No, wait. How many do I have to get to uh, unlock Super Ink Boy? Also notice this has a randomized music every time you start the world. It's kind of interesting. Because I'm pretty sure it is. It sounds like it. That's another cool detail, because I... I've known some games that are like this, they just keep using... Hell, I've known some games that basically just have one song throughout the whole game, and it gets... Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, it gets annoying, I, like... I, I kind of hate those. And hell, there's some games that uh, don't even have music at all, beyond, like, the main menu. Yeah. I mean, Rico, for example, yeah, I praise that, but the one thing that does get somewhat bothersome is if you play it a lot, and you just stand it around, and there's just no music, so... Yeah, I, I think I remember that when you were playing it. I was like, huh, oh, I'm going to music something. I guess you just play your own music in the background. That's what I do any t anyway when I play games, I just play my own music in the background. But my own creative music. 
but actually like music from other games. Oh man. Ah, damn it. Wow, they really want you to get a lot in order to be able to, to play any of these ones. I like the Triforce. Yeah. I'm in a very referencing mood. <laughs> they don't the past even. Few days. They don't even tell you. Uh, oh, that's weird. You can just flip the menu like that. It's kind of, it's kind of like um, Super Smash Bros. Melee does that. They don't even tell you how much you need to get for each thing to uh, to unlock the next set. That's one thing that bothers me because I mean. If a, if a game gets somewhat difficult, I at least like having there, if there's like locked things, I at least like them no. telling you what you need to do to unlock it. Yeah. So you can at least try to reach for the minimal, because I mean here I'm sitting right, having somewhat a difficult time. Oh, and, right there, like wall <laughs> and this is only level 2. I don't know if this, is the start being randomly generated or is this the same thing each time? I'm not sure. I know it's the same, but it might be just like, like a flip or something. Crap, I, I keep making that mistake of just falling down. You want to give it a try? Sure. Yeah, there's only two levels unlocked. The basic cube one's a lot easier. It, oh, that's right. I had PlayStation controls in one. Oh, you can start dodge. Or, or scoop. What uh, button was that? It's the uh, A button. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, going back, to, uh, there's a there's a pretty big difference between difficulty for uh, the first level and the second one. Uh, I, I guess not having the little thing showing the to unlock the other things. I guess it's another way, or the way I think of it, because I'd assume that it'd be um, to where you have to reach a certain minimal on the previous level to unlock the next one. But it'd be cool if uh, you could just. Basically, on any level, you reach a certain. Uh, oh no! You reach a certain limit, and it would uh, unlock the next locked one. But also that trail, I can't get over that trail. It's like a Unity thing. I, I keep thinking, like when I think of Unity, I always think of that kind of trail. So I use that for weapon attacks and all that. And bullets. Also, I'm thinking horrible ragdolls of Unity. I'm not using the slide as much because it's kind of like. Killing me. Yeah, I can imagine the slides yeah, only used yeah, for uh, like when you have to go around the corner, like that one that always kept getting me every time on the other level. Blood Knights, a wonderfully bad game. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> he is a vampire. No, I wouldn't. Oh, <laughs> it's all for him. You want your turn? So I kind of keep going around the same area. I'm gonna try uh, doing the second one again because I'd like to. It'd be nice to. Oh, Flapster, of course, it will be the most one of the most difficult, and of course the triangle is the most difficult. I actually do like games when they do floating jumps because it just makes it more satisfying to move around when you're jumping. It makes no sense you can just control yourself in the air, obviously, but I just find it really satisfying. Like Halo's jumping, I love that because it's you can control your jumps. You're not like controlling a, a rock falling super fast. But I feel like the floatiness is kind of catching me off guard because I'm thinking I'm landing on a platform but I accidentally shoot, slide off and die. I just found a comment on how I had a lucky streak of uh, pole placements and then uh, this happens. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, a new record, but still. Oh, you hit the spike. That's how you just died for no reason. Oh, there's spikes now that's... Yeah, I didn't even notice. I thought they were in the back. Oh, crap, I just hit back. I thought they were arrows. Dang it. Triforce. By the way, this song reminds me of a song from Bomberman 1994. 90, it was one of the Bomberman games for the Super Nintendo. Oh no, no, it was Bomberman for like the um, TurboGrafx-16. Yeah, I really do like the like visual style of it, the glowy. I expect I, this I mean, to I be see a lot of glowy stuff now. I expect but, this to be a lot more uh, simple than it really is, so I mean, I do like I think it's nice and really differentiates yeah, plus really adds to a little it adds to a little visual difficulty element to this to make you have to yeah, pay almost. a little more attention. As it's, this really, it's really demanding of the mind though. <laughs> because it's a memorization at the same time of where that platform was and where the entrance is while you're trying to move up. It's, it's kind of like anxiety 
clinch inducing game. Because anxiety inducing games can be really nice, depending on the person what the kind of game is. I, I, I can't, I can't. Certain games really give me anxiety. It's like, oh crap. But other games where it's like diff super stress inducing design, kind of like Resident Evil games. Like, I like that. I'll give this one last try and then we'll call it that. It's also one of those games too. It's like those, uh, kind of like a flash game where if you die, you know you know you can do it eventually, given the time, and you keep getting playing it over and over. Okay, we can't end it on that. It's just it seems difficult. It's sometimes difficult depending on how they place it. Just like they give you such a little ledge to jump off of, to where you just keep getting stuck between the hole. Gotta get that stretch goal. Of, <laughs> gotta reach floor 100. I'd like to reach at least four, like 35 or 40, but I know that's not going to happen at this rate. Yeah. Well, that, that I'd say I'd say that's a good place to end it. Pretty much, it gives a good impression, and we're, we're, we're both not too good at this. Yeah, game. we're just trying it out. I don't think time. I don't think we're going to even reach Super Ink Boy, let alone Flapster or the Hexagon Arrow. But that's pretty much Hexagravity. It's available on the eShop. For uh, just two bucks, and three easy payments. At this rate, at this rate, I'd say for two bucks. I mean, I typically I don't like when these kind of games, like such simple ones, the ones that look like they could pass as mobile ones. I don't like when they flood the eShop. But I mean, this one, based on the, how it's only two bucks, and if it goes on sale, it'll probably be even less. Plus, the way it differentiates itself a little bit with one that how the difficulty level and the different styles per level, I'd say that it's an okay game. It's, I don't know, basically, based like how you were saying with anxiety inducing, unless you're like a I mean, speedrunner or yeah, something like, who's like, I mean, like, gets if it's, you're like at the end, you're like at 480 and you're like, oh, can't die, you can't die. Yeah. I don't, if you're like a speedrunner or one of those people who just loves the like, the intensity of the challenge, you could just go on for long lengths, then I wouldn't say this is one of those games where you could go on for like long periods of times. But if you just wanting a, if you're wanting a cheap challenge, then I'd say that this is definitely an interesting game to try out, and it's not that expensive to do so. So the music's a little, the music's a little interesting. Yeah, the music's definitely interesting. I actually like it. It reminds me. What does it remind me of? Like some sort of. It reminds me kind of older arcades. Yeah, there are 3D games, even though that's like homage to like old games in general. But anyway, that's been my review of Hexagravity it's for pretty, the Nintendo Switch. Pretty interesting. If you want this yourself, like I said, it's available on the eShop for two dollars. It released it released a few days ago, but I just got around to reviewing it here because again, it doesn't support video capture. But this is Warsarcy on the Game Clips channel, and I'm out. You'll see you in the same. Take care. <laughs>